Coming to you live from WKVS Studios in Cedar Rapids, it's T for Two, the Terminator 2 Show, starring your Uncle Casey, and here's your host, your Uncle Casey. Hi, welcome to Top T for Two, the, um, um, <clears throat> can we cut? Welcome to the very first episode of T for Two, The Terminator 2 Show. On today's show, we're just going to be talking about what I think is a fascinating period of time between 1984 and 1991, before Terminator 2 had quite existed. Because not long after, the original 1984 film, The Terminator, made a huge impression on audiences across the world, people were clamoring for more. And it wasn't long before rumors were starting to spread about what comes next. So today, on T for Two, we're going to be talking about some of the rumors and speculation that spread through film gossip magazines in the years leading up to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Okay, so the original film, The Terminator, was released to U.S. theaters in October of 1984. And just nine months later, in the July 1985 issue of film magazine Cine Fantastique, James Cameron already discusses the likelihood of a sequel, saying, We've got a story worked out, but it hasn't gone beyond the talk stage. He also speculates that the studio could want to start filming as early as April of 1986, as soon as he's finished up with Aliens. But he believes they won't want to wait that long, because they'll want to follow closer on the heels of the film's success. In that case, we will oversee it at one remove and select a director. So Cameron is thinking that this sequel could be happening soon. Not only that, but he's open to the idea of having someone else direct the sequel to The Terminator. Which is kind of weird to think about. I mean, that's his baby, you know? Two months later, Star Invaders magazine publishes their special Terminator 2 preview issue. That's right, it's 1985, and somehow these guys have their own special preview for Terminator 2. A movie that hasn't even entered negotiations to be made yet. But we're going to save this for part two of this episode because there is some wild shit in here that really deserves its own show. So make sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss this one when we do it next week. Meanwhile, back in real life, it's June of 1986 and Gail Ann Hurd, who was the producer on the original Terminator film, confirms to Starlog magazine that she is indeed working on a deal with Hemdale. Hemdale is the company that produced the original film, and they control half of the franchise rights. But she says that they haven't quite come to an agreement. And she says that it's unsure what role she and Cameron will play in the film. They may simply write the script and oversee the production from another team. So it's kind of like what Cameron was saying a year prior about him not directing. She also says that she and Cameron have discussed a brilliant way of opening up and expanding the story. Fast forward just five months to November of 1986, and Cameron says, There are no firm plans to make Terminator 2 at present. I've already decided not to direct it. It would be the fourth sequel that I've been involved with, and my third as a director, and that's not too good a record out of four movies. So at this point, Cameron is out as director. He's already decided, I've done too many sequels, I'm not directing it. Over a year later, Starlog 121 features an interview with actor Lance Henriksen, who played Lieutenant Vukovic in the original Terminator film. And Henriksen added a few fun things to the rumor mill. First, he reveals they're going to do a second Terminator. 
which isn't exactly true as at this point the production companies haven't even gotten past negotiations yet. He then says about his character in the original film, You never see me die, so I was telling Jim Cameron that it could start in the hospital with me covered in scars, saying, Look, if this guy came once, he's gonna come again. This is a really fun idea, and it gave the fans something to talk about, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't go this route, because when you insert too many fun callbacks from an original movie into the sequel, it just doesn't feel quite as fresh and new. And when Terminator 2 came out in 1991, it felt very fresh and new. But we're a long ways away from 1991, we're a hell of a long ways away from Terminator 2, as we find out in October of 1988 that Heard is still in negotiations with Hemdale. This is going on two years now, but she says it has nothing to do with lack of desire, and she's getting eager to announce it as a go. So things are getting exciting for Terminator fans. It looks like this is about to happen. And then, nothing. We hear very little on the situation until over a year later, when in June of 1989, Schwarzenegger says, the way I see it, Terminator 2 will never happen. He explains that now that Hemdale has their own distribution company, they want Schwarzenegger to come back and do a sequel, and they want to distribute it themselves. See, Schwarzenegger had a bad experience with this very same thing when he did Raw Deal with Dino De Laurentiis. De Laurentiis had just gotten their own brand new distribution company, and they wanted to distribute the film themselves, and Schwarzenegger says when they did it that way, it failed terribly. So as long as Hemdale insists on distributing the film themselves, Schwarzenegger says, there will be no Terminator 2 with me. Fast forward to January of 1990, and now James Cameron is saying that he likely won't be involved. He's saying, if it happens, it will be Gale's project. And now the word on the street is that comic book writer Frank Miller is set to write the script. I wonder what that would have been like. So by January of 1990, we are now at a point where James Cameron is not only out of the director's seat, but he is out altogether. And even Arnold Schwarzenegger is not interested in the project. It's fascinating to me that we got to this point. And in a way, it's amazing that we ever got this movie at all. Because at this point, it seems like it had no chance. But the future is not set. And in May of 1990, Gail Ann Hurd confirms that she will be producing Terminator 2. And James Cameron is writing the script. We would later find out that this was all made possible by getting Hemdale out of the picture altogether when Mario Casar of Kuroko Pictures stepped in and purchased the rights to the Terminator from Hemdale for a cool five million dollars. Adjusted for inflation, that would be almost $10 million in 2019. The good news continues the following month when Cameron is confirmed to not only be writing the film, but now he is directing it as well. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is on board. And for these little children today, all grown ups, the one line that everyone always asks me to say is, you know, say, I'll be back, say that line, come on now. Are you gonna be back or what? <laughs> Schwarzenegger is no dummy. He knows that the android assassin that he played in 1984 is one of the most popular villains in the history of motion pictures. So to revisit that character couldn't exactly hurt. And the money that Kuroko was offering him didn't hurt either. So at this point in 1991, there's only one key piece of the puzzle missing. One key player from the original film that we haven't yet heard from. And in the January 1991 issue of Starlog magazine, in response to a fan letter asking whether or not Sarah Connor was going to make a return for Terminator 2, the magazine confirmed that, yes, Hamilton will be in Terminator 2. The pieces are all now in place and Terminator 2 Judgment Day officially begins filming in October of 1990. By the following spring, reports start to come into Cine Fantastique that Schwarzenegger is playing a good Terminator this time. The magazine also reports that up-and-comer Robert Patrick is playing Q, 
Key 1000. Yes, you heard me right. Key 1000. It's printed this way several times throughout this magazine. I can only assume that the guy from the set who was feeding the dirt to Cine Fantastique magazine either had a really shitty phone connection or he just didn't know what he was talking about because he also claimed that Patrick had already signed on to reprise his role of Key 1000 in Terminator 3, which in hindsight is very unlikely as Terminator 2 was clearly not really written with much intention of a sequel. The magazine goes on to report that Robert Patrick won out the role of the T1 Key 1000 from Billy Idol, which is true from a certain point of view. More on this in a future episode of T for Two. Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss it. Rumors also come out about James Cameron fostering a real pressure cooker atmosphere on the set to try and get the film completed because he's been given such a narrow window to create such a massive film. And a lot of people on the set say that they don't think that it's going to get done in time. But in the process, they're making a ton of overtime as everybody works to get it done. Somehow, miraculously, the film did get completed for its July 4th release. The April 1991 issue of Fangoria magazine reports that Michael Biehn is even going to be reprising his role from the original film. We find out that it's a dream sequence and it's ultimately deleted from the film. Sorry, Michael. And finally, in August of 1991, Cine Fantastique magazine is still referring to Robert Patrick's character as Key 1000. I don't... The movie's been out for over a month now. Get your shit together, guys. There was also a lot of gossip going around Hollywood about the film's unprecedented budget, but we're going to save that for a future episode because we're running a little long here, and uh, we got to get out of here. Tune in for next week's episode when we're going to discuss this son of a bitch. And until then, I haven't thought of a sign-off yet.